Welcome in, everyone, to Lively Lewis Stories. That's right. We're back with even more awesome adventures with Levi and Ivy. Set your story time meter to fun and get ready to join the Lively Lewis crew. All you need is your imagination and... Off we go! I can't wait to see where our story takes us today. Have you ever wanted to get more Lively Lewis in your life? Well, we've got you covered. Grab an adult and zoom over to LivelyLewisShop.com. Or just click on the link in our show notes. Enough about that. Let's get to today's super Lively Lewis story. This story goes out to Monroe and McKinley, our amazing cousins. Dad, are you ready? Take Levi and I to the Science Museum. Again? Haven't you two been there three times already this week? I mean, I think it's great that you both love science, but is there anything else left at the museum that you haven't seen? What? Do you remember that we have to meet Dr. Larkin? I'm just joking, Ivy. How could I forget Dr. Larkin's and the amazing adventures you have in the museum? Of course we're going to the museum today. Thanks, Daddy. I'll get Levi. And that's where our story ends. But don't worry, there's so much that happens before this point, and it's time to hear all about it. That's right. And it all started with some free tickets we won on the radio to visit Sacramento's new state-of-the-art science museum on opening day. You're welcome. What? I said you're welcome. If I hadn't won those tickets last month, then we would never have gone to the science museum on opening day. The kids never would have met Dr. Larkins, and they never would have developed their love for science. Okay, thank you, Eric. Who knew your knowledge of old science show theme songs would actually come in handy one day? Me. I always knew it was an important skill to have. Anyway, on with the story. When we arrived at the Sacramento Science Museum, there were hundreds of people lined up to get in. This new museum had everything. Interaction exhibits, a planetarium, and a food court where you can make your own freeze-dried marshmallows and lots of other cool stuff. When we arrived, they asked for all the kids in the crowd to go up to the front of the line by the main entrance. Then out walked Dr. Larkins. She was a scientist who worked at the museum. She was older and wore a white lab coat with fun, colorful science patches all over it. They said things like, think outside the Bunsen burner. And I only think of science periodically with a picture of the periodic table on it. Classic science humor. She was full of energy, and Levi and Ivy were drawn to that. They loved exploring, investigating, and learning new things, and Dr. Larkins noticed that energy and spark right away. And after meeting her, she gave them something very special. They couldn't wait to race back to us and give us all the details. Mom! Dad! We just met Dr. Larkins, and she's awesome! And we're a part of the Museum Science Superstar Club. We're the only two members, but we know more kids will join. After talking to Levi and Ivy, Dr. Larkin said she could tell they had the potential to be great scientists one day. Then she gave them a small gift and said, the true magic of science is not just to know, but to experience. Levi told us this and then showed us a shiny golden key, which looked very old. Dr. Larkin told us This key was super special. She said the key would unlock special adventures in the museum. Can we try it out? Please, 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 please. If it was okay with you, she wants us to tell her what we think of the museum at the end of day. Sure, I think it would be fine. I'm just happy that you're both so excited about learning. Yes, it sounds great. And while you're exploring, I can do a little science experiment of my own in the food court and see what's happening when you freeze dry a double cheeseburger. Let's just say it didn't end well. It actually wasn't all that bad once I added the freeze dried ketchup. Anyway, once inside the museum, Levi and Ivy were off exploring, not yet knowing the incredible power of the gift that Dr. Larkins had given them. As we walked around, Levi and Ivy ran off to try out their new science superstar club key at the space exhibit. Levi, what do you think the key does? Maybe it unlocks a special door that has cool extra activities we could do? There's only one way to find out. That's when Levi and Ivy walked into the space exhibit. As they stood there staring at a projected image of the Milky Way on a giant screen in front of them, 
They felt like two space explorers among the stars. They tried each of the activities at the space exhibit, learning about what makes up an asteroid, how far away Earth is from the sun, and how even though Mars is closest to the sun, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system. Once they had tried them all, they had only one question. What does a key unlock? Then all of a sudden, Ivy found something and called out to Levi excitedly. Levi, I found a hidden door in the space shutter model. And that's when something totally amazing happened. The key opened that hidden door, but there weren't just extra activities or cool space items for Levi and Ivy to look at. It was something much more out of this world, literally. It was an entrance straight to the galaxy. Billions of stars, enormous planets, tumbling asteroids, and zooming spaceships. It was beyond incredible, and Levi and Ivy couldn't wait to jump in as they crawled through the little door. Levi, we are floating in space. This is incredible. Ivy, I just touched the shooting star. Amazing. Just keep an eye on the door. Then we can get back, okay? Levi and Ivy then floated through the galaxy, exploring a world of stars and planets for what felt like hours. But when they decided to return to the museum, only a few minutes had passed from when they had left. Their next adventure took them to the world of engineering, where they felt the gravity of having to build a suspension bridge to help move building supplies to create a new neighborhood. Get it? Gravity? Because they didn't want the bridge to fall. Yes, Eric, we get it. Ivy, I found a little door. We need to unlock. It's right next to the giant building blocks. Give me the key and let's go. Ivy and Levi were so excited to see what super science situations were ahead. And once through the little door, they worked together to create a working suspension bridge, helping out an entire town. Next, their science superstar key dropped them right in front of the heart of an atom, the building block of all matter. Ivy, can you believe we're inside an atom? Protons, neutrons, electrons, and Ivy and Levi. Levi and Ivy had the most incredible time that day and couldn't wait to find Dr. Larkins before we headed home. We waited for them at the main entrance and watched as they ran toward us, out of the exhibit area, with huge smiles on their faces. Dr. Larkins then appeared as if out of thin air. She asked Levi and Ivy if they had discovered what the special science superstar key did. They nodded their heads, so excited to tell her all about their adventures. They hadn't told us yet, so we just watched as they recounted their travels through space their accomplishments in engineering, and their time inside a teeny tiny atom. We just thought they had really great imaginations, but Dr. Larkins knew the truth. She was so kind and encouraging, telling Levi and Ivy that they could be the next generation of amazing scientists. And it all starts with a love for learning and exploration, she said. As we left that day, we thanked her and let her know that we'd bring Levi and Ivy back soon. We waved a final goodbye, and as we walked down the giant stairs of the museum, Dr. Larkins called out, The true magic of science is not just to know, but to experience. Mom and Dad, can we please come back tomorrow? Please, please, please? Dr. Larkins said she will meet us here, and we can look around together. Sure you can, kids. I'm so happy that you're taking such an interest in science. And I was happy to come back and try out some more scientific food experiments. So when we returned the next day, Levi and Ivy ran off with Dr. Larkins, and their adventures grew and grew. This time, the three of them made their way through the human bloodstream, finding out what hard work it is to be a blood cell, but also finding out that their special key wasn't working like it should. I think we should go back now. Mom and Dad said we should meet them for lunch. Okay, just let me open the door to get back into the museum. But as Levi and Dr. Larkins looked on, they saw Ivy struggling with the key. It's not working. The key's not turning. Let me give it a try. She's right. It won't budge. Dr. Larkins jumped into action, and she knew what may be happening. Levi and Ivy were using the keys so much that it just couldn't handle all the back and forth jumps between the museum and the different realms they were being transported to. She said she knew this could happen because she'd experienced it once before. It was when a very special scientist that she met at her hometown science museum gave her the key 40 years ago. You mean you used this key when you were a kid? Dr. Larkins nodded her head and used all her scientific knowledge of space, time, and magic keys to get them back to the museum. 
Dr. Larkins told the kids as much as they all loved exploring the world of science that for their safety, they would have to stop using the key for now. Oh no! You mean we can't fly through the Milky Way again? Or walk with the dinosaurs? Or talk with Thomas Edison about how he made a light bulb? Or see what it's like to hatch out an egg? She knew they were upset, so Dr. Larkins was quick to reassure Levi and Ivy that they would get to use the key again. But while they waited, there was plenty of scientific exploration and learning they could do right in the museum and in their everyday lives. Thank you, Dr. Larkin. We would search for science and keep exploring while we wait. That night when we got home, we could tell that the kids were still a little upset. When we asked why, they explained that the stories they told about their great science adventures weren't just stories. They were real. The key was magic and it was extremely special. After hearing their enthusiasm, we knew they were telling the truth. We told them we would definitely take them back to the science museum ever they wanted and that someday, maybe the key would start working again. Then they could once again safely experience an amazing up-close look at all that science has to offer. But until then, they searched for science in all that they did knowing. The true magic of science is not just to know, but to experience. Thanks, McKinley. Thanks, Monroe, for this awesome story. I love you. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the story and learned a little something, too. And since we know everyone has their own story, we'd love to hear yours. If you have an idea for a Lively Lewis story, leave a comment on our Apple Podcast review page with five stars, your idea, and your little one's name. Then maybe our next adventure will be with you. Until our next story time hangout. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to share another fun Lively Lewis story with you.